assalamu alaikum today's lecture of our topic uh, of our subject cbd is uh, soaps and detergents so today we will be talking we will be discussing about how soaps are manufactured what is the process and uh, you know how detergents are made what are the classification and you know everything that is necessary to be discussed so let us start about with soaps as you can see these are different kind of soaps history of let us start with the history of soap so it has been more than 200 2500 years since we have been making soaps around 600 BC, which was before Christ, first recorded soap manufacture from goat tallow and ash purposely used uh, medicinally. Back in uh, 600 BC, soaps were basically manufactured from goat, goat tallow, which is the fats from and an, the animal fats and ash, and they were used for you know different uh, skin treatment and uh, so on. But as a medicine, in second century AD we start using for cleaning purposes. Yeah, like after in second century Anno Domini, Anno Domini uh, the soaps were started to be used as a cleaner. Around in 19th century soaps were commonly used in the Western world. Like just in the 19th century, the soaps were made very common. Before that they were used, but not that extensively. Description and importance. Soaps and detergents are surfactants as the main ingredients. Basically, they have surfactants, which are used as a main ingredient. They remove uh, dirt from the surfaces made from fat and caustic soda. As we will discuss uh, later on how, it, how they are made uh, specifically. But uh, in order to generalize, you can say that they are made from fat and caustic soda. Use as a cleaner as well as perfume. You know, you have different kind of soaps. You have uh, uh, some soaps that are used primarily for cleaning purposes. Then you have uh, different uh, beauty soaps and so on with uh, fragrances. For medicinal purposes, uh, uh, you all know that soap has soap different. There are different soaps that we use that are antibacterial. So they can they are the primarily they they are used in the skin you know, to create, uh, treat different kind of uh, skin problems, uh, rashes and so on, just to, you know, clean them from any bacteria. You have to wash it from a from an anti antibacterial soap or so, you know, in that purpose, in that perspective, they were used. Saponific, uh, description and importance. Saponification reaction is the core process of soap manufacture. So, the main process that is uh, that uh, takes place in the manufacturing of soap is is a saponification process this is an exothermic uh, reaction and uh, develop quickly at around 125 degree centigrade so we have a triglyceride which is a tello we have a caustic which is an OH and it is making glycerin and soap this is a saponification process, a, a simplified form, where we, we are getting glycerin and soap as our product. Raw materials. So let us discuss what are the raw materials that we will be using in the manufacturing of uh, soap. We have alkalis. Again, just as I told you, caustic. They basically react with fats and oil to form soap. You normally use NaOH and uh, KOH, different uh, kind of alkali solutions. Fats. Fats are basically animal fats that are used. Fats. We either use vegetable oil or animal fat. High fatty acids increase the yield. So, in terms of fats, we can either use a vegetable, we can use vegetable oils, or we can normally use animal fats, which are in common practice from the medieval area, uh, uh, from the medieval era. Additives. So there are certain additives that are added apart from alkalis and fats in our raw material. And uh, 
that include abrasives. You have, you have different abrasives that we uh, introduce in our soap. They, were, they are basically added to enhance uh, the texture of our soap. Then we have fragrances that we add in our soap to give it a scent. Then we have dyes, you know, soaps are of different colors, so dyes are added. So these are some of the raw materials that we use in the production of uh, soap process. So we have different methods in uh, the processing and the manufacturing of soap. Number one is batch method. So traditional method, of, it is a traditional method of uh, soap manufacturing. Normally it takes around four to 11 days to complete the process. And they use, it is normally used for small scale production wherein soap is made from saponification of oil and fats with the aid of uh, soap pen or kettle. It's a very simple batch process kind of a traditional one. Now, it involves the following steps. Number one, slow incubation period involving the addition of sodium or potassium uh, hydroxide to glass rod. First, we add uh, our caustic into the fats uh, slowly, and then we incubate it. Then the temperature of the soap mass is controlled where uh, alkali is used up rap rapidly in the exothermic stage. Now, with the purpose of this uh, slow addition is uh, the temperature of the soap is to be controlled because when alkali will be uh, alkali will be used, the it will be an exothermic reaction. Gradual completion stage. Then we have, you know, gradual completion stage. So this is an overview of a batch process. So what we have is, first of all, we mix fats and alkali. Fats and alkali are basically, it's a cattle to provide heat. The mass thickens and produce soaps and glycerin. So the reaction happens and so and glycerin is made. Then we basically add salt. Now what? why do we add salt? So that the layer can separate out. The soap, uh, the soap and glycerin are treated with salt, causing the soap to rise to the top. So soap, ab yahan pe, hamare paas, we get uh, as an upper layer, and the lower layer is that of glycerin, because I think because of the difference in densities. Then we have a pitching process, where we basically the soap is boiled again with water. We provide heat and the mass separates into neat soap and uh, niger. Basically, we basically boil the soap. So soap and water is collected at top, which has 70% soap, 30% water. And at the bottom, we have impurities, which are called niger. Continuous method. Now, continuous method is more flexible, higher, higher speed and more economical. Six hours of manufacturing time is enough. We normally give that. Oils and fat are added to, uh, to sodium hydroxide in the presence of steam and mixed uh, inside a hydro hydrolyzer. So it is pretty much self-explanatory self that you have six hours of manufacturing time. You have oil fats that are added and you have a hydrolyzer. So this is a flowchart of continuous manufacturing of uh, soap. So the saponification process. So we have at the start, then we have a splitting stage where natural fats are added. Then we have a bubbling stage. And before that we add caustic leftovers uh, so from the previous manufacturing batch. Then we have milling, then we have soap noodles, mixing, cooling, finishing, stamping, wrapping, final packaging and the end. Uh, of, after cooling finishing, we have a trimming stage also. So this is a flow chart of a continuous process of soap manufacturing. Uh, it's a very important chart. You must remember it. Splitting. So what happens in splitting? The first step is the continuous process. It splits natural fats into fatty acids and glycerin. So it is a continuous process and basically it just splits the fats into uh, fatty acid and glycerin, utilizes the vertical stainless column with diameter of the barrel 
called a hydrolyzer so the, we have a, the stainless steel column and uh, the diameter is uh, equal to that of a barrel and it's called an hydrolyzer then we have fatty acids that are distilled for purification then we have bubbling here glycerin and fatty acids are mixed together including caustic soda Saponification occurs in this process in order to facilitate the chemical reaction steam bubbles are introduced process in a bubble it is normally pro processed in a bubble kettle and leftover soap at the bottom are reused then we have milling liquid soap is sprayed over a big mantle roll and solidify blades cut it to soap ribbons then we have uh, steel rollers called mix uh, mills, mix and compression soap ribbons. Then we cut it uh, to be, uh, to a more denser ribbons. Blade cut. We have blades that cut it into a more denser ribbons. So this is these are some of the equipment that are used. Okay. Just an overview of uh, how the uh, devices actually look. Soap noodles. So we use soap. Uh, so the soap uh, ribbon falls and are more pushed uh, to an extruder known as the soap plate. So we have a soap plate. Uh, shapes. Uh, the purpose of this soap plate is basically it shapes uh, soaps into noodles and collect it into vents. Soap noodles are then dumped into a mixer. So we go mixer dump kar dete. So these are some of the. Uh, images of uh, soap noodles that are produced now we have the mixing stage where we add uh, where additives are mixed with the soap noodles here uh, color dyes are in powder and liquid form are added we basically add uh, color dyes in powder and liquid form as well as we add uh, fragrant oils with the aid of uh, steel plates so this is how it is done these are the images you can see that your uh, the color dye is being added additives are being mixed and so on another noodle plate is is used to facilitate further mixing or material so we have two noodle plates and the other one is there to for facilitate further mixing then we have cooling and finishing stage. The soap may be poured into molds allowed to harden into large slabs. It may also be cooled in a special freezer. A special freezer may also cool be kar sakte. The slab is cut into smaller pieces of bar size and usko small bar size ke pieces mein kaat le, which are then stamped and wrapped. The entire process is continuous. A pura continuous process hota hai from splitting to finishing can be accomplished in several hours. So this is a machine that is used for cooling and uh, finishing of the soap. Now we have stamping. Upon molding and trimming of the soap bar, they are stamped. It is then delivered to final packaging. We just put a stamp on it. These are some of the picks from the processes where stamping is being done. Then wrapping and final staging, we have plastic sheets that are used to cover. So bar here, heat is then applied to seal, to seal the wrap. They're moved and put to boxes for delivery. So this is wrapping uh, machines that are used. Parameter in selecting a grade of an ingredient and soap making. So what are the parameters that we have to consider while we are selecting any ingredient in soap making. Number one, cleansing. Number two, conditioning. Number three is bubble leather. Number four is uh, creamy leather. The ability for them to produce, first of all, cleanse the skin, condition the skin, bubble leather, you know, ability to make foam, creamy leather, iodine, and INS. So cleansing. Cleansing. So what is a cleansing? Ability to grab. Uh, onto oil the ability to remove the oil from your skin a typical range of cleansing would be 12 to 22 conditioning refers to the employment content uh, emollient content in soap which soothes and off uh, softens the skin and retains skin moisture its ranges from 44 to 69 
ठीक है इट्स बेसिकली सॉफ्ट इंस दिस स्किन द एबिलिटी फॉर द सोप बबल लेदर बबल इस सोप से एबिलिटी टू बबल अप एंड लेदर द हायर द बबली नंबर प्रोड्यूसेस अ फ्रॉथी लेदर द क्रीमी देन अ क्रीमी लेदर विद लिटिल और नो बबल्स सो बबल्स नहीं प्रोड्यूस होंगे अगर बबली नंबर इसका जो है वो लो हो क्रीमी लेदर फर्मनेस एंड क्रीमनेस ऑफ द लेदर लॉरिक मिस्ट्रिक और रेक्नोलरिक एसिड प्रोड्यूस सो विथ क्रीमी लेदर ये डिफरेंट chemicals that are used to form uh, to make a soap more cream leathery iodine so lower iodine number indicates harder soap bars with less conditioning quality so why iodine is important to using um, if a soap has is hard it has low iodine number which means uh, the soap will not be able to make uh, leather a hard soap no matter how much you will use it will not make uh, it will not form bubbles okay so i lower id number indicates the harder soap bar with less conditioning qualities achhi quality ka nahi hota normally agar aapke jo uh, aise soaps aapne dekhe honge jo ke clothes washing wagaira mein use hote hain kapde ke liye jo soaps istemal hote hain unme leathering quality nahi hoti aap usko kitna hi you no matter how much you 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 know apply them they normally don't make uh, bubbles they don't make foam because they have a lower iodine number number of grams of iodine that will react with double bond in 100 grams of fats and solids that is the iodine number for those that contain values of iodine higher than 70 formation of soft bar of soap may acha ins number determines the physical quality of the soap based on sap as well as the iodine number it is it is also kind of the, the similar one the okay, get is just a physical quality to so ins ins number also we determine the softness or hardness of a soap both uh, soaps and detergents acha wah mai bata deter acha now the next topic is in soap and detergents is the detergent there are different kinds of uh, detergents that are on display here you can see these are lot detergents so let us start with the history of uh, detergents so what in 1950 we started uh, detergent was basically introduced in the industry initially we had liquid they were used as a liquid in laundry hand wash hand dish washing we had hand dish washing where they were used all purpose cleaning products bhi hum inko use karte the then we had automatic dish washers and they were their detergents were used as powder in the form of powder detergents with oxygen bleach were present at that time they had they had with they had oxygen bleaching uh, they would bleach with oxygen and they were used normally as fabric softeners also which basically uh, it was the ring cycle that was added in the uh, washing machine so in 1960s advancements were made and then uh, laundry powders with enzymes were introduced and the pre washing soil the those enzymes due uh, were introduced and what they did was they started uh, we started pre washing soil uh, pre washing soil and stain removers so we would pre wash the clothes and it will remove any soil or stain uh, because of the enzymes that were included in our uh, detergents so enzyme pre soaking was also invented at that time in 1960s where we would pre soak our clothes before it is being washed then in 1970s we have fabric were uh, fabric softeners ठीक है, वी वर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड एंड शीट्स एंड वॉश साइकिल वॉज एडेड इन आवर वॉशिंग वॉशिंग मशीन्स एंड मल्टीफाइकेशन प्रोडक्ट्स लाइक डिटर्जेंट विद फैब्रिक सॉफ्टनर्स वर इंट्रोड्यूस लाइक दे वर सो डिटर्जेंट विल नॉट ओनली बी सर्विंग वन पर्पज बट इट विल बी हैविंग मल्टीपल पर्पजेस लिक्विड हैंड सोप्स वर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटीज बिफोर दैट वी वुड हैव बार सोप्स 
In 1980, automatic dishwashing liquids were introduced before we had powders. But in 80s, we started using dishwater liquids, detergents for cool, cooler water washing, and concentrated laundry powders were introduced. And in 1990s, we had ultra super concentrated powder and liquid detergents. We had automatic uh, dishwasher gels. We had ultra fabric softeners, laundry and cleaning product refills. So the raw material that is used in detergent making are, we have sodium trypolyphosphate, which is normally used as water. The function is to soften the water. It also serves as a pH buffer to reduce the alkalinity. We need soft water. For that purpose, it is used. Then we have sodium sulfate, which is a bulking and free flowing agent. It just uh, helps in these two properties. Then we have soap noodles that are used in detergent making. They basically cause rapid foam collapse during raining. Then we have zeolite, again used as a water softener. Then we have sodium carboxymethylcellulose. It increases the negative charge on cellulose fiber, causing them to repel dirt particles. They are positive charge, they repel dirt particles, hence removing any sort of dirt. Then we have linear alkyl benzene sulfonic acid. It is a surfactant. Basically, again, a surf, uh, surface active agent. What is a surfactant? Uh, surf, surfactant is basically a surface uh, active agent that removes the dirt stains. Caustic soda solution. Caustic soda solution is used to neutralize the LAS. The linear alkyl benzene sulfuric acid that we have used. And then we have coconut diethanol amide or fatty alcohol ethoxylate. It basically is a non-ionic detergent and foam former. Then we have fluorescence and it basically absorbs UV light and emits blue light. Then we have water. It dissolves various content, help causing them to mix better. Then we have soda ash, which keeps the pH at 9 to 9.5, ensuring optimum detergent function. Again, we use bleach for that. Sodium perborate is used. It basically bleaches the stain without damaging color, fast dyes. Ticket breaks down to high temperature to release H2O2. Then we have bleach activator, which is X tetraacetyl ethylene diamide. It basically cat catalyzes an NABO3 breakdown at low temperatures. We have enzymes, alkaline protease breakdown to protein in the alkaline condition created by soda ash helping to remove stains. So enzymes are basically used for that purpose. Then we have color and perfumes again to make our, make our product more aesthetically pleasing. So now this is an important chart to remember. It is the manufacturing process of a detergent. So what we have is basically we have sulfur melting tanks And from that, from that sulfur is passed into a burner where it is burned. Dry air is introduced. Now that mixture SO3, SO2 is converted into SO3. And then we have a cooler. It cools SO, uh, SO3. Then it is, uh, uh, it enters the reactor. In the reactor, we introduce alkylate or fatty alcohol. Here we have an exhaust. The reaction takes place. Then, the first of all, it's a mix. It's a mixture. Then it. Uh, this is a mixing process. Then we have a reaction where sulfonation and neutralization process takes place. Then we have caustic soda is introduced into the resultant mixture. Then we introduce different uh, builder cellulose. See okay, there. Then caustic soda we introduce here. After that, it moves to slurry mixing. We have slurry type. 
it basically then we have a slurry mixing process then we have an homogenizer it homogenizes it then we have a filter then we have a spray tower where, where it is sprayed okay then after spraying we have from here we uh, collect the mixture over here where we have dry mixing and here we introduce our perborate silo uh, perborate and enzymes they are introduced here this is our dosing system and after that we have dry mixing we introduce perfume here essence you know different anything that we have to add in our dyes and anything uh, and whatever has to be added in detergent and then they are extracted out for filling so this is a continuous process of a making of detergent so we have four processes we have a blending process we have agglomeration process we have slurry method we have liquid detergents ये अपन गलत है थर्ड थ्री प्रोसेस पहले हम डिस्कस करते हैं ब्लेंडिंग प्रोसेस आल्सो नोन एज अ टम्बलर प्रोसेस और द ड्राई मिक्सिंग प्रोसेस यूजुअली बाय स्मॉल टाइम कंपनीज इट इज नॉट नॉर्मली यूज्ड ऑन लार्ज स्केल द इंग्रेडिएंट्स आर नीडेड आर लोडेड इदर इन अ टम्बलिंग वी हैव अ ब्लेंडर और अ रिबन ब्लेंडर टू फैसिलिटेट इन अ एफिशिएंट ब्लेंडिंग ऑफ कंपोनेंट्स द मिक्सचर इज कैरीड आउट इनटू अ कन्वेयर बेल्ट इट इज ट्रांसपोर्टेड and dropped into boxes or cartons for delivery to wholesalers it's a simple process then we have agglomeration process it is a continuous process which is usually applied by large scale detergent manufacturers now what happens in agglomeration we we have agglomerator the dry ingredient needed in the detergent making are first fed dry ingredients are then blended while allowing the liquid ingredients to be sprayed on the dry mix using the uh, using the nozzles fitted into agglomerator walls then we have a dry belt that collects the output of agglomerator device where material becomes friable then we have pulverization of these metals uh, material uh, and sizing and screening then we have slurry method where water is added to dissolve ingredients and form slurry through the nozzles the slurry is fed inside the top portion of a cone shaped container while hot dry air is simultaneously forced into the bottom of the cone upon drying of the slurry beads of the dry uh, detergent settles at the bottom of the cone where they can be readily collected for packaging mixing all the ingredients as well as water and various chemicals known as solubilizer solubilizers uh, allows the detergent and water to blend eventually so this is the use now packaging they can be packed into carton bottle pouches bags as you as you must have seen consideration of uh, certain attributes and characteristics of the product such as compatibility and stability cost pack package safety solid waste impact shelf appeal you know different factors have to be considered so parameters in grading of an ingredient in detergent making so what we have to check while we are selecting what the grades of an ingredient uh, uh, should be while we are using a while we are making a detergent so the first is assay high assay is favored for better quality and shelf life of the product so assay is basically a treatment process uh, basically evaluation testing process in chemical industry where we basically determine the quality of a of of any material a mineral by determining the ingredients that are used to make that uh, mineral or in or whatever we are judging so that process is called assaying so high assay is favored for better quality and shelf life of the product then we have density and particle size distribution which is the product segregation and flow properties determined by the density and particle size uh, distribution of the solid ingredients which also play a role in the absorptivity of the surfactant then we have friability what is friability the ability of solids to be crumbled like uh, break ho jaye solids under pressure the property may affect the particle size distribution product segregation and flow properties jo bhi hum 
सॉलिड्स ले रहे हैं वो क्रम हमारा जो प्रोडक्ट बने वो उसकी कम्बेबिलिटी यानी फाइबिलिटी पे कैसा है इफेक्ट करता है देन वी हैव हाइड्रेशन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स नाउ सिंस वाटर इज प्रेजेंट ऑन ऑलमोस्ट ऑल डिटर्जेंट फॉर्म्स आर सॉलिड एजेंट्स इज रिक्वायर्ड टू बाइंड सम ऑफ द वाटर टू फॉर्म हाइड्रेट सो वी हैव टू बाइंड द वाटर दिस अफेक्ट्स द केकिंग एंड फ्लो प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ पाउडर डिटर्जेंट and the flow ability and stability of the liquid products so that's why hydration is important because it affects the stability of our liquid product and uh, the for the powered powder detergents it affects uh, caking and flow properties then we have chemical stability the raw material must be consistent with each other and must uh, must be stable enough to tolerate the manufacturing process it must not crumble it must not disintegrate this is significant in liquid detergents as in powder detergents containing bleach enzymes and or a high alkalinity so these are some of the parameters that we have to keep in consideration while uh, selecting an ingredient for a detergent so this is it for our lecture on soaps and detergents uh, i hope you understood all the concepts that are told here regarding this soap and detergent industry um, we will meet in the next lecture thank you